Coming up today on News Valdosta, the Sheriff's Office makes a large donation to education. And today is National Voter Registration Day. Taylor Kelly will give us a look at the weather and Quenisha Claiborne will bring us the best in sports. News Valdosta starts right now. Welcome to News About Asta. I'm Brige Wiley. And I'm Zach Saxon. The Lowndes County Sheriff is donating seizures from a drug bus to local educators. Investigators with the Special Operations Division of the Sheriff's Office served a search warrant for the residence located at 2763 Howe Road in November of 2010. A large indoor marijuana growing operation was discovered and it led to the seizure of marijuana and other items. Investigators reported that items such as grow lights, fans, water pumps, humidifiers, CO2 generators, and multiple other items used for greenhouse operations were removed from the home. Due to a request from Sheriff Prine, the donation of these items to the Lowndes County Board of Education for the use in their agriculture and horticulture education classes was recently arranged. Prine says he's happy that these items that have been used illegally will now benefit the education of our young people. City police have arrested a man in a relation to an alleged arson and burglary in the 2400 block of Deborah Drive. But also resident Charles Hawkins is charged with arson in the first degree in burglary. Police say Hawkins was spotted in the neighborhood where the incidents took place and was ordered to stop by the officer. When he refused to comply with the orders, he led the officers on a foot chase that ended with his apprehension in the 2400 block of North Forest Street. He also was charged with an obstruction of an officer. Rep reports say the Varasta Police Department was informed about a possible arson and burglary on September 9th. Hawkins is currently being held in the Lowndes County Jail. The Lowndes County Sheriff's Office arrested 28-year-old Donald Mathis after a drug bust that happened around midnight. The Special Operations Division conducted a search of a home in the 200, 2000 block of Bradley Street in Valdosta. Investigators located a small amount of cocaine and a low, loaded 357 Magnum handgun. At the time of the arrest, officers were unaware that Mathis was a convicted felon, and Mathis has been charged with possession of cocaine, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, and possession of tools for the commission of a crime. He was arrested and transported to the Lowndes County Jail. The funeral has been held for VSU student and Cairo native Marcus Holmes. The Georgia State Patrol reported early last week that Holmes was struck by a semi-truck on I-75. The driver of the truck that struck Holmes told officers that a pedestrian walked out onto the highway and he was unable to avoid the collision with the pedestrian. Sergeant Carl Taylor of the Georgia State Patrol says there were no indications of alcohol or intoxicants involved in the crash at the time. The Valdosta Police Department believes that there are steps citizens can take to prevent car theft. News Valdosta's Amber Worthy has more on this story. The Valdosta Police Department strives for quality service and citizen satisfaction. I spoke with Officer Bernos Williams about how we should protect ourselves from auto theft. When it comes to crime where theft by any and auto occurs, we ask people to avoid that by simply removing any and all items out of your car that can be stolen. Even if that item has no value to you, it can be valuable to another person, a criminal like that. Officer Williams and I did a walkthrough to look at things that citizens should look out for when leaving their vehicles unattended. A lot of times when it comes to some particular crimes, and when you bring into autos, it's a crime of opportunity. We always ask people to remove any and everything out their car that can be stolen, even if you don't consider it a thing of value. Such as, if you look into this car, you'll see there's a cord here. That cord is for a uh, GPS system. The GPS, although it's not it's in the car, yet they see that cord. That's going to encourage them to enter that car more, as well as the purse, a bag. You have a bookcase in the back of this vehicle. As well as, we ask people to remove things as small as change. What is 50 cents, 60 cents, 70 cents to you? To that person, it could be something such as more funds towards getting another drink or some other type of drugs. So we ask people that secure your vehicle. This door is locked, but the window is halfway down. This is not a secure vehicle. A secure vehicle means taking everything of value at your car, placing it in a locked trunk, rolling your window, completing it up, and making sure that all your doors are locked. 
Officer Williams made it clear that these deaths can happen within any length of time, and it's simply a crime that is committed when the opportunity presents itself. Reporting with News Valdosta, I'm Amber Worthy. A robbery and assault was reported to have taken place on the 300 block of East Martin Luther King Drive last Thursday around 10 p.m. An officer arrived at South Georgia Medical Center where the victim was being treated and an iPod was reported to have been stolen in the robbery and police are still investigating the incident. Three Valdosta residents have been charged with shoplifting at Walmart. 19-year-old Brian Mosley Jr., 22-year-old Brianna Mosley, and 21-year-old Kathleen Collins are accused of attempting to take almost $600 worth of merchandise from the store. Police say the three passed all points of sale locations without paying. Stolen goods reportedly included various small grocery items, articles of clothing, and other household items. Last weekend, police were dispatched to a stop and shop at 1407 East Hill Avenue in reference to a forced entry through the front door by an unknown person. The person allegedly got away with $1,400 worth of cigarettes and cigars. And if you have any more information about this burglar, you can contact the Vidasta Police Department. Police found cocaine and marijuana in the possession of 25-year-old Kimberly Lane and 27-year-old Mark Lewis. Police reports state that the amounts found were indicative of intent to distribute. An electronic scale was also found and seized. The two Valdosta residents were arrested and transported to the Lowndes County Jail. Both are facing charges including possession of cocaine and marijuana with the intent to distribute and possession of narcotic equipment. Coming up, the city encourages citizens to get involved in the community. And the Georgia State Patrol is led on a high-speed chase. Stay with us. So, I just moved in with his family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Welcome back to News Valdosta. Today is National Voter Registration Day. The last day to register to vote in local elections is quickly approaching. October 7th is the last day citizens can register to vote in this year's November elections. Citizens are encouraged to make time to visit the Lowndes County Board of Elections located at 2808 North Oak Street. Voter registration applications can also be picked up at local libraries, the Office of Student Life at Valdosta State, and various other locations. SPLOST, school board candidates, and a host of other things will appear on this year's ballot. Early voting begins October 14th at the Lowndes County Board of Elections. The City of Valdosta has two events planned in the coming months to allow citizens the opportunity to give back to their communities. Make a Difference Day is scheduled for October 26th, from 8.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. An e-cycling event is scheduled for November 9th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. They will meet in the Mathis Auditorium parking lot. In Sylvester, Georgia, the Georgia State Patrol made an arrest after a high-speed chase through multiple counties yesterday afternoon. The GSP says that the chase was started by Macon police when police spotted a stolen vehicle. Once the driver left Macon jurisdiction, the Georgia State Patrol took over. The driver was clocked going speeds over 100 miles per hour. The driver led police on a chase through Dooley, Crisp, and Worth counties. The police had to use stop sticks on the vehicle to end the chase. This led the driver of the vehicle to lose control. From there, he led police on a foot chase through a wooded area and was apprehended shortly after. Officials said the driver was a male, but his name has not been released. Charges resulting from the chase are pending, but officials did say that he is currently wanted for other incidents in Macon. 
Residents of Cairo are upset because they lost their fight against the placement of a group home in their neighborhoods. The permit for the home was passed by the City Council last night, and the City Council had a long list of things to discuss, including the request for the group home. Last year, a nonprofit group called Sunrise Community of Georgia sued Cairo because they felt that the city had unjustly denied a request to open the home. A settlement for this suit is still underway, but the council granted the permit for the home last night. Residents are fearful of the repercussions that could ensue because of this group home. In Terrell County, an investigation is underway into how 19-year-old Francisco Alberto Arias managed to escape from a South Georgia prison. He was recaptured in Gwinnett County in Metro Atlanta on Monday. Arias is facing charges for over 20 crimes that include burglary, theft, and gang participation in Gwinnett, Hall, and Dawson counties. After being captured, Arias was not transported back to Terrell County, but to a different prison. Officials at the Terrell County Correctional Institution are now saying how they think Arias got away. Up next on News Valdosta, the city and state EPD deal with local water woes. Then Taylor Kelly will give us a look at the weather and Quenisha Claiborne will bring us the best in sports. All this and more when we come back, so stay with us. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. Your level seven in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing you. Believe me, I'm good at it. But at some point, you're going to need to start pushing yourself. See, once you've got your GED diploma, You'll feel so good about yourself. You tell them. You can't change your past, but you can definitely change your future. That makes me so happy, I'm ready to bust out a dance. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? My gentle technique isn't really working. You need something a little more... Persuasive? Yes! You listen, and you listen good. Hey, where's my sandwich? Terry? Terry! Take it from me to King DMC. It's a real cool thing to get your GED. Get that diploma! Now hold on and we'll find you free GED classes. Capiche? Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. sex don't give up on birth control either there are more methods than you think find yours at bedsider.org welcome back to news about Asta. the city of Asta is making arrangements with the georgia environmental protection division about the continual problems with sewage spills the EPD and Valdosta are addressing the violations after it was established by the city that the withlacoochee water pollution control plant must relocate by 2016 with this relocation, the plan also needs $2.5 million worth of improvements to meet all manda mandatory regulations. An inspection of all manholes and sewer lines is to compl be completed after all of the changes are made, and the new treatment plan is expected to cost more than $55 million. It is one of the many city improvements listed to be funded by SPLOST, and the City Council has stated that whether SPLOST passes or not, this is something that must be done. Improvements to the Badasta Lowndes County Public Library building are also listed as something that will be funded if the SPLOS referendum is passed this November. City officials say the roof of the library has various areas that need repairing because when it rains, it leaks causing mold to grow in some areas of the library. This runs the risk of the mold spreading to some of the books in the library and could possibly make people sick. The library already has had to throw away hundreds of books because they were affected by the mold. Along with other things, the officials say the air conditioning unit is obsolete. The city council continues to insist that the city needs for SPLOS to pass. A full list of what SPLOS would cover can be found on the city of Adosta's website. And speaking of rain, we've had our share in the past few days. Let's see what weather anchor Taylor Kelly sees in stores for us. Taylor? Thanks, Zach. Well, Sunday officially marked the first day of fall and already temperatures are appearing to be a few degrees cooler than they have been lately. The high for today is 83 degrees with an 80% chance of precipitation. And the rain will continue on to the evening with a 60% chance and a low of 69 degrees. 
For tomorrow, we see a break from the rain with partly cloudy skies and a high of 84 degrees. We can also expect to see a break in the heat index as well with a very moderate level. And great news for allergy sufferers, the pollen count for tomorrow is going to be lower than it has been, with the main pollen being ragweed and chinopods. And that's your local weather forecast for today. Coming up next, we'll take a look at our local sports. Stay with us. Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. I did. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. It's totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you know that strollers have the right of way on the sidewalk? Yes. Yep, I did. Did you guys did know? Did you know that kids who eat breakfast have higher GPAs? Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. That's actually what I was going to say. Did you know babies should never touch silver? It's really bad for them. I knew that. Did you guys know that statistically friendly kids have more friends? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. I'm putting that on my blog. I just put it in mine. I love learning. I believe in service. I am full of passion. I embody sportsmanship. I trust in my resourcefulness. I like balance. That's why I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Division Two. We're back, and joining us now with the rundown on local sports is Quinesha Claiborne. What's going on over there, Quinesha? The Lions High Bikettes proved they can dominate both home and away games after winning both games this past weekend against Camden County. The Lions High School softball team national rank increased by 10 after the game, advancing the Vikings to 22nd in the nation, while their state rank increased by 7, moving them up to 15 in the state. The Lady Vikings possess 18 wins, 2 losses, and 1 tie. Their next game is scheduled to take place this Wednesday night at 6 o'clock against the Thomas County Central. The Valdosta Wildcats aren't the Valdosta Wildcats weren't as fortunate after losing their match against Fitzgerald Hurricanes last week. The softball team was clobbered by a score of 10 to 1. The Wildcats will, however, have a chance at redemption against the Tift County Blue Devils. Lowndes County High School competition cheerleaders kick off their 2013 season this weekend. News about Austin's Shelby Mitchell has more. The Lowndes High School competition cheerleading team is working hard to prepare for their first competition this weekend at Lambert High School. This is their first competition in the 6A region. The school received its first two region titles in the 5A division. The team focused heavily on perfecting stunts during practice. Coach Trollinger spoke about how the team is preparing for the upcoming competition. We videotape the routine so that the girls can watch it to see where they need to improve, where their weaknesses are, as well as their strengths. And then we also watch other squads, some of the top squads in the state, that way they can see where they need to be in order to be competitive towards the end of our season. Later on in the practice, the focus switched to tumbling and sharpening cheer motions. These categories play a big role on the score sheet at the competition. Senior Megan Anderson explains how the team sticks together in such stressful situations. Positivity on the mat, no negative attitudes, no matter how bad of a day you had, just come in and be prepared to work really hard. The Lowndes High School competition cheerleaders are hard at work for their 2013 season. We wish them luck as they compete this weekend for their first competition. With News Valdosta, I'm Shelby Mitchell. And let's not forget that on this day in sports history, Babe Ruth played his last game on the Boston Braves on May 30th, 1935. Babe Ruth nicknamed the Bambino and the Saltan and Swat died in 1948. He was a Major League Baseball pitcher and outfielder who played for 22 seasons on the three teams from 1914 through 1935. And that's the Bets in Sports today. Back to you guys at the news desk. Thanks, Quinesha. When we come back, we'll take a look at the coming in to farm days. 
and how much does it cost to live in Valdosta? Stay with us and find out. When every moment matters and a hand reaches out, when someone gives blood and a life is saved, that moment when heartbreak turns to hope, you're there through the American Red Cross. Every day, the Red Cross responds to nearly 200 neighborhood emergencies, and your support makes it possible. Use this moment to join us today. Visit redcross.org. how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. Welcome back. If you like produce and fruit fresh off the farm, you probably know about farm days in downtown Valdosta. But with the end of summer approaching, our farm days is coming to an end. News Valdosta reporter Taylor Kelly has this report. Located in downtown Valdosta, outside of the county courthouse, Farm Days is a great way for the local farmers to showcase their homemade goods. See right here, this is the best jelly anywhere. I'm a genius, J-E-E-N-U-S. And I've got all sorts of stuff up here on this counter. It will amaze you at what you find here. Come on down and see me. The event offers an endless variety of foods, drinks, handmade items, and so much more. And it is a great way to bring the community together. Um, agriculture is a huge industry in the state of Georgia, and especially in, in Lowndes and surrounding counties. So while it is a great community event, it's also great for economic development. You know, it's, it's a great venue for our local farmers to come sell their wares. Vendors were eager to show their items, especially one about Austin local that you can say changed your typical get-together snack and showed us a sweet and slightly spicy way to add something different to any of it. This is Gigi's Sugared Peppers. They're a treat like you've never had before. They're, they're a great uh, little gift. They're something good to have when you have company coming over. They're just a great little gift. But our main part is to participate in our city. Uh, when they had Farm Days uh, announced, we wanted to be part of Farm Days. For more information on Valdosta Farm Days, can visit ThoughtAustaCity.com and be sure to take advantage of the last two events of the season that take place October 5th and October 19th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. For News About Austin, I'm Taylor Kelly. A study was completed about 10 metro areas in Georgia. Research by the VSU Center for Business and Economic Research states that Valdosta's overall cost of living is 2.3 percent higher than national average. In the latest report, Valdosta is listed among other metropolitan areas, including Atlanta, Augusta, Dalton, Fayetteville, Marietta, and Savannah. Marietta has the highest cost of living index, and Valdosta is second highest overall. Valdosta ranked f highest for groceries, utilities, and health care. Valdosta's cost of living for housing remains relatively low, however, because of the low housing prices. There are eight vacant city board positions to be filled. This is an opportunity for, our, for a member of our community to get involved. The closing date for submitting the general board application and code of ethics form is October 30th by 5 p.m. Citizens interested in serving the community in this capacity should first review the membership requirements and code of ethics booklet. Complete a general board application and then sign a code of ethics form. Contact City Clerk Teresa Bolden for more information. Thanks for watching News About Asta. I'm Brigitte Wiley. And I'm Zach Saxon. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. <laughs>